Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. Well, in episode 13 of our ongoing series, where we are refurbishing this 2006 Land Rover LR3 with the V8 petrol engine, we're going to be focusing on our tailgate, which is inoperable. So if you look right under here, you will see something very glaring missing, which is the actual switch that is supposed to engage the actuator to release this upper tailgate with the window. Instead, you have to come in from the back seat. You have to grab this cable that's been exposed by the previous owner and pull on the cable itself to release the upper window half. Now, thankfully, the bottom half here has a button that is still functioning. It's obvious that they've been in here to gain access to this cable because all of these retainer pins here have been broken off and the two outer um, covers of plastic are loose. So we're gonna need to get in here uh, to at a minimum uh, re-engage this cable to the actuator. Um, hopefully that actuator is functioning. If not, we're gonna have to replace that. But we're gonna need to start first with replacing this switch. Now, I found this one online. I'll show you at the end where uh, to access them if you have the same issue. Let's take a closer look at it. All right, let's take a look at this replacement part. So just a simple bubble wrap plastic packaging here. We pull it out and we have a nice rubberized new switch. You can see this spot right here that's ribbed upward. And it's got a kind of a haptic sound. You can hear it clicking. It doesn't click on the outer edges. I only hear the click dead center. Uh, now there's a couple wires coming from it and then three sets of plugs here. I like that on the back of the switch, it's weather sealed here with what feels like um, silicone caulk of some sort. Well, we know this switch is bad just by looking at it, but did you know there's a way to check the actuator right from the front seat? Let me show you. Now on page 38 of the owner's manual, it says if the switch in the back fails to actuate the upper tailgate release, then you can come right up here to the master unlock and lock switch, press them both at the same time for three seconds to initiate it. Those are the front. Nothing. So everything up here locked or unlocked, but nothing happened on the tailgate. All right, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with the actuator in here. Is there a wiring problem or is the actuator itself so worn out that it won't even attempt to make a noise? So we've got to get this panel off. And in our case, every bit of it is loose. We just need to take off these uh, two side straps here. Um, this one over here has been gone through so many times that it's kind of standing up on its own. It's just sliding right off. If we go over to this one, I just got a small little screwdriver. And as you can see on this close-up shot, I just pry it up a bit. And on ours, it pops right off. And then we just gently wind it right back to the plastic trim. All right, now this is just a dust cover. And if you flip this up, ooh, a Georgia peach quarter. Bonus. You get access to the back here. So everything is loose, but you have to take off these little round supports to get this plastic piece off. So a half inch ratchet is doing that. All right. Man, this panel for the lower tailgate has definitely been abused. Every one of the little Christmas tree retainer clips is broken. And then this side here 
has been broken off of it. it. Looks like we can get this one right here kind of pushed back in, but the rest are all severed and cracked. So I'm gonna have to epoxy this. So as we can see right here, because all this foam has been torn away, uh, someone's definitely been in here and not very gingerly. They really assaulted this thing. And now I know why the actuator isn't working. <laughs> you see these two screw holes right here? It, that's where it gets bolted to. There's nothing there. It has been removed. Well, all right. So if we take a closer look at this broken switch, you can actually see the little micro switch right there. And listen, it's actually functioning. So let's do a test. All right, I've got the plug where the actuator should be. I've got a couple probes into it set on DC. Let's hit this little switch. There we go, 12.46. So. We will be getting power to this switch once we purchase an actuator. All right. So nice hardy stamped metal back with the plastic cover. It comes with the replacement bolts to mount it onto the tailgate. And right here we have the plug. So it looks like over here, we're going to need uh, to remove this plastic cover to be able to get the cable in there. Let's take it out to the car and do a function test. All right, we've got our new actuator lined up, ready for a test. These two screws here are T15. So let's remove those. Boom, off it comes. Okay, so here is the actuator and this spring loaded plunger area should retract every time it gets the proper voltage. So let's first just test it on its own. I'm gonna press the button up here on the broken switch. Oh yeah, sweet. Now, we're gonna pop in our cable. Okay, pair of channel locks, there. All right, now, right here, there is a little clip and the little 90 degree bend right here goes through that hole. And that clips into place a lot easier than that. All right, now let's try it again. Sweet. I'm gonna close the actual Catch. Now let's see if it'll actuate that. Yep, there it goes, it released it. Great, so now let's disconnect the power cable because we're gonna need to slide this unit in here and bolt it up. I'm gonna put this cover on first. Now these screws are going into plastic, so there's really no point in using any Loctite on them. Right, we are ready to loosen up these nuts a bit and slide these into their spot and lock them into place and then put the plug in. But before we do that, one of Carlo for Hire's favorite segments in any video I do is when I say, while we're in there, let's do something else. So while we're in here, why not put some noise canceling adhesive foam inside this panel? I'm hoping not to be in here anytime soon again. Now they put a really good job over here of putting a piece, I can feel it, of like kill mat over here that uh, keeps this from getting that resounding boyoying sound. But 
uh, we can do a little bit more over on this side to deaden the sound everywhere we, we can reach through here. So I am going to take my rag and this rubbing alcohol. And let's get in there, degrease that area and put this adhesive back sound deadener in. All right. Yeah, a good amount of dirt was in there, huh? Now I'm just gonna peel back a small bit so I don't inadvertently get stuck on something and I can pull the rest out once I've got it into my preferred spot. Just like, just like that. And now I pull the backing off and rub it in there. And we've got room for one more piece, like right up in here. Next, we're ready to ease this guy into place. And look at that. It just fits right into these little slots. Boom, look at that. I love it. These two are 10 millimeter bolts. So let's, I'm going to cinch one down just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to take them out and put a thread lock on each one. All right, I'm going to use blue Loctite so that if we ever need to change this out again, it won't be that hard, but it's not going to come loose during all the vibration of driving. Go. And number two. Okay, now I'm gonna reach in this slot here and put the plug in. It only goes one way. There's little uh, notches right here that make it so you can't put it in wrong. All right, let's listen. Yeah, that's working. Now let's do the real test. All right, let's reach under here and get that micro switch. There it goes. <laughs> I've got this little support down here until we put those two straps back on. All right. So this repair is done. Now I want to put some more foam back over this like it was from the original manufacturer. But before I do that, I want to clean this whole tailgate area. If I lift this cover up, you can see there is dust and glitter in here. Uh, I don't know what happened with the previous owners, but it's like a glitter bomb went off in this car. I find it everywhere and I'm in the process of cleaning it all up. So if I ever find any heavy deposits of glitter, I'll know Aspen's up to no good. Let's clean that up though. All right, quick rub down with rubbing alcohol so I can get some more of that Noiko soundproofing down here. I'm gonna use the same stuff to cover this. Now I'm gonna avoid getting any of the sound deadener in these three spots because the panel clips are gonna go in there and I don't wanna fight through this stuff. I don't know if that's any quieter, but it makes me happy. All right, lastly, I'm just gonna clean up everything around here before we put the panel on. And then let's go head over and repair that broken piece of the panel. All right, I've cleaned both surfaces off with rubbing alcohol. Now let's take this epoxy here. I'm using JB Weld. It's a two-part epoxy. 
So we're going to mix this together really quick and it sets in five minutes. So it is a mix and go. All right. Let's get some spring clamps on here. Nice. And we'll let that set up. Now, before we put this on, we're gonna to need to take off this trim piece here because this guy won't slide in and then engage uh, all of our little panel clips. They have to go straight down. So unfortunately, we need to remove these four Phillips screws each one covered by a little plastic bun. So I'm just gonna pry those off with a multi-tool here. Just like this. And we have the same panel clips underneath that we need to pop up. I'm just being very gentle with them. And there are two of those and these still look in good shape so we can reuse them. Also, while we're in here, let's give it a little shot of silicone lubricant. And now we can lower this back down and prepare our panel to go back on. Now, I've got new panel clips here. Uh, I tried the green ones. The green ones do not fit. Uh, they're not quite long enough, even though you can barely tell a difference. I will leave a link, however, to these, but let's get them in place. Now we can line these up. Nice. Now put our little connectors back on for the cables. Now we'll line up the panel clips on our trim piece. One, two. Nice, and put in our screws. And finally our buns. One, two, three, and four. Nice. So now it's time to replace this broken switch. And you could just get in here, try to pry it out and then splice the wiring. Um, I haven't seen a single video on actually getting this thing out in one piece with the whole wiring harness. So I wanna do that just to see how difficult it is. Uh, and I also tried getting in here to pry out this piece. There's a couple clips on the sides and I haven't had any luck and I don't wanna break this piece of trim. So I'm going to do it the hard way, get in here and start taking off uh, the inner plastic molding. So since we need to get behind this rubber weather stripping and I don't want to damage it, I'm just going to remove it. It's got little integral clips.
Next, I'll remove the Phillips screw from the handle here. And now the regular panel clips. Just by removing the rubber weather stripping and this side of the panel, it exposes the plug to the switch. Three 12 millimeter nuts that are holding this unit on. And then there are four T30 bolts right here. Let's remove all that, see if we can get this unit off and disconnect the switch right here. In addition to all that, there's also two plastic panel clips in there. So I disconnected the switch cable and let's remove this. we go. And because nothing can ever be simple, the replacement switch has a different plug. That was something I saw in some of the comments on Amazon and it looks like it stands true. So in light of that, I think the easiest thing to do is cut the wires to the switch itself and splice those together. I had considered switching the components in here over but this little metal piece right here is missing inside of this broken switch and it just wouldn't work. So I'm gonna replace the whole thing. Now, these are the clips on the side that I was talking about and I cannot get in there even through here with bending a tool and overcome these clips. So I think what I'm gonna do is take a drill drill in here to take care of this side of the clip and then we can get to splicing. Oh, you saw it here first. That is a complete pain to remove. All right. Strip flux solder heat shield. Well, putting this back together is really just a reversal of the process I already showed you, so I didn't waste your time in filming it and putting it in this video. But if you want to play it backwards, yep, 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 up, Freddy is the devil, you can see exactly how to put this back on. But what a difference in functionality. We went from having to climb through the back seats to a fully functioning tailgate as good as the day it rolled off the showroom floor. I am so excited to bring you this video. I couldn't find anything else like it online. So if you found it helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the channel. Also, please consider subscribing. It's free, you just have to log in and then click subscribe. Um, I'm gonna leave links for everything that I utilize in this video, uh, including these awesome panel clip pliers. They can get into really tight spots and safely pop those panel clips. I used it to uh, get in here. Uh, those are gonna be Amazon affiliate links, so if you click on them and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify all the time it takes to make these videos. Speaking of these videos, I'm hoping the next one is going to be replacing the leather on the two front seats. That's going to depend on the uh, supplier, but they need it, they're in bad shape, and I'm hoping that's gonna be the next video. Until then, thank you for watching. What do you think? It's so nice.